The second law of thermodynamics deals with the entropy change for a spontaneous process and for a reversible process. What was discovered in thinking about and analyzing spontaneous processes is that they can do work on the surroundings. Once that work is done, the energy cannot be recovered. For a reversible process, however, since no work can be done, the total energy remains the same. This leads to two equations for the entropy change for the universe. For a reversible process, the entropy of the universe is unchanged, delta S of the universe equals zero, though the entropy of the system may change. For the reversible process, the sum of the entropy change for the system and the entropy change for the surroundings is zero. For an irreversible process, the entropy of the universe increases. Delta S for the universe is greater than zero. The sum of the entropy change for the system and the entropy change for the surroundings is positive. Since all spontaneous processes are irreversible, any spontaneous process results in an increase in the entropy of the universe. We will come back to this a little later. The third and final law of thermodynamics is a statement about the absolute entropy of any pure crystalline substance at absolute zero. Because all molecular motion ceases at absolute zero, there is only one microstate available to a pure crystalline substance when the substance is at absolute zero. Therefore, since the natural log of one is zero, the entropy of a pure crystalline substance at absolute zero is zero. Knowing the entropy at some particular temperature allows us to know the absolute entropy of a substance, since entropy is a state function. The absolute entropy is the entropy change as the substance is brought from a crystalline solid at absolute zero to whatever the current state of the substance is. Some examples of standard molar entropies are given here. A more complete list is in Appendix C in your textbook. Molar entropies tend to increase as the molar mass increases. This is because larger molecules have more ways they can move, that is, they have more microstates. Rudolf Clausius defined the entropy change at constant temperature as the heat that would be transferred by a reversible process divided by the temperature at which that transfer occurs. That is, delta S equals Q reversible over T. Heat that flows into or out of the system changes the entropy of the surroundings as well as the entropy of the system. The change in the entropy of the surroundings for an isothermal process is delta S equals Q for the surroundings over T. But if Q is positive for the surroundings, then it has the same magnitude and the opposite sign for the system, which means that delta S equals minus Q for the system over T. At constant pressure, Q for the system is equal to delta H for the system. So, delta S for the surroundings equals minus delta H for the system over T. Since the universe is composed of the system and the surroundings, delta S for the universe is equal to delta S for the system plus delta S for the surroundings. If we substitute the previous equality into this equation, we get delta S for the universe equals delta S for the system plus negative delta H for the system over T. If we multiply both sides by minus T, we get minus T delta S for the universe equals delta H for the system minus T delta S for the system. Minus T delta S for the universe is defined as the change in the Gibbs free energy for the system, delta G system. 
Since a spontaneous process has a positive value for delta S for the universe, then the value of delta G is negative for a spontaneous process. The Gibbs free energy is the energy available to do useful work. And for any system, we can calculate the Gibbs free energy using the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We will look further into the Gibbs free energy in the next lesson.